Hey everyone, welcome to the first video in section 5. We are going to start looking at this big idea of being able to do chemical conversions within a chemical reaction. In other words, we'll be able to take an equation, do some stuff with it, uh, and in this one we're going to look at balancing, and then we can figure out how much stuff we need to put in or how much stuff we can expect to get out when we're doing labs. And this really ties in really, really well. I mean, it's essential to tie in with moles from the last chapter. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to add the next step. We're going to begin by balancing chemical equations. So in your notes, this is section 5.1, we are going to be looking at equations because they give us a snapshot or they give us an idea of what happens in a reaction. Now if you go on to higher level chemistry, you'll see that the equations we learn here are not always the case. Sometimes there are multiple steps that are happening at the same time and the equations we use now are, are overviews of what's happening, but it's, they give us an idea of what happens in the reaction. They show us what goes in and what comes out after it's done regardless of how many steps there are. All equations need to follow the law of conservation of matter, which means we cannot change the amount of, of substance or the amount of material. The amount of substance Oops, I can't spell substance. Let's try that again. Substance. In other words, if it comes out of our reaction, it has to go into the reaction somewhere. And what we do is we add coefficients. So we're going to look at a balancing question right here. It says the equation below is unbalanced. Balance it so that it follows the law of conservation of matter. So when we're looking at this, we're looking at the number of elements on the left and the number of elements on the right. And the easy way to do this is to just make a list. So we're going to split this right here at the reaction arrow. And on the left, we have nitrogen and hydrogen. And on the right, we still have nitrogen and hydrogen, which is good because if nitrogen goes in, it has to come out somewhere. Now, if we do a count, looking over here, I've got two nitrogens for this two underneath my N. And I've also got two hydrogens for the two next to the hydrogen. On the right now, I've only got one nitrogen, and now I've got three hydrogens. And so what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to multiply by coefficients that will get us the same number of reactants, the stuff on the left, as products, and things on the right. So we're going to start with the nitrogen. Now, when we're doing this, coefficients multiply. So I have to start on the side that has fewer nitrogens. So I need to at least double this side. So if I double this nitrogen, let me, let me rewrite this over here so I've got N2 plus H2 gives me NH3. So if I add a 2 over here, now my nitrogen, I've got two nitrogens and six hydrogens. Okay, because this 2 applies both to the nitrogen and to the hydrogen. So, okay, that's great. So my nitrogens are balanced, but now look at the hydrogen. Now I've got 2 to 6. Well, if we go to the side that has fewer, to the reactants now, 3 times 2 will give me six hydrogens in the reactants, which is good. So now my nitrogen is balanced and my hydrogen is balanced. So this is a balanced reaction. And it's a lot of back and forth, just flipping between reactants and products, reactants and products, to figure out where we need to balance. Now compounds on the left, again, these are called reactants. And the compounds on the right are called products. So there are some CTQs over on the right-hand side of the screen. You can do those in some of the blank space in the packet. I've also got a balancing worksheet. And we've done the lab, this, the SMORE lab, that asks you to balance chemical re reactions. So take a look at all of those three things and be able to prove to me that you know how to balance a chemical reaction.